Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. You may have a seat in the presence of God. God is good, amen. I was watching my husband. I'm, I'm like, man, he's getting more good looking than ever, right? Come on. <laughs> I believe it, amen. It's good to see all of you today. Hallelujah. We just want to thank God for his faithfulness in our lives. We're going to go straight into the word of God. Can we stand up and pray? I always feel a little bit nervous when I preach in a place I haven't preached in a long time, even home, imagine. Especially that I just found out that there's people who don't know me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God, we give you praise for today. We thank you that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by your spirit. We thank you for today, we thank you for the word that you have already spoken over us. We thank you for lives that are being healed and transformed in this house. We thank you, Father God, for restoration. We thank you, God, for destinies that are being unleashed in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you. God, let your will be done in our lives. God, we dedicate our lives one more time to you. We dedicate who we are to you one more time. Thank you for those who have come, decided not to stay home to watch the World Cup. We give you thanks for them, God, for their dedication to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I was so convinced that at least 80% of men wouldn't be here. Because African men with the World Cup, seriously, don't go on your iPhone to watch, okay, when I'm preaching. It's over? Hey, who won? <laughs> hey. Oh, it's over. Jesus, eh? So they don't want to watch it. They don't want to. God bless you for coming. We'll go watch it after. Amen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go into the word of God, into Ephesians 3.20. I mean, during the worship and then the word of Pastor Jibe, then I, I felt like I'm going all over the map. God started giving me other verses to preach on, and I'm like, God, how am I going to go with all this? But, you know, God will give us grace to put all this together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. And all the time, I send you greetings from Montreal. They say hi to you. The church is growing. The church is going strong. As you can, uh, as you can imagine, I'm just pushing them forward. Amen. I tell you, Montreal is a beautiful city. It needs to be won by God. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations. Amen and amen. To him who is able, God wants to do more in us and through us. Amen. He wants to do more in us and through us than we can even have the ability or the capacity to imagine. Amen. He wants to do more through us and in us. Amen. amen. Who believes today? You know, God wants to carry out his purpose in us and do beyond our greatest prayers. Hallelujah. He wants to do beyond our greatest prayers according to his power, amen, and according to his purpose. Not according to your power, not according to your purpose, but according to his power and his purpose over our lives, amen. amen. Hallelujah. 
Are you hearing me today? Today I just want to challenge you because I feel that's the message I've been having in my heart for the church in Montreal, and I believe it's for the whole church, the whole cross point. Amen. You look at what God is doing in the life of your apostle, elevating him faster than we ever thought. Amen. Amen. Gave him the title of doctor. Amen. Now he wants to give him the title of ambassador. Only God, through his power and the, the, the plan that he has for his life and for Crosspoint as the organization. Hallelujah. It's beyond our wildest dreams. There are certain things you don't even dream of because you don't even know they, are, they exist. Amen. Like ambassador at large. It was the first time I hear something like that. But God knows how to elevate his people. He knows what, he, what we need at the time that we need it because he has the end in mind. And that end, you don't know it, I don't know it. But he knows it. And because he knows it, we can be secure in every step that he brings us through. Whether that step is hard, is easy, is powerful, seems little. Amen? He knows that the steps that he, he brings you through there are steps that will lead you to your destiny. Amen. Now, I want to go back uh, to the Bible verse that God gave me as I was sitting here. Because I feel like as a church for so long, we have mis uh, misunderstood what God wants to do in our lives. Amen. Genesis 26, 12 to 13. The Bible says, Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. Now, you know what? You can't be blessed without sowing. I don't, I don't want to go into the sowing part. But the first thing that God did to Isaac, he blessed him. Amen? Amen. And I feel like sometimes as the church, we think that we are in the church to be blessed. No, no, no. We are not here to be blessed only. We are here to be a source of benediction, a source of blessing. Hello? Say, I'm here to be a source of blessing. Our prayers need to be changed. God bless me so I can be a source of blessing. Don't bless me for myself. I'm too small. But I want to be a source of blessing to whoever God is going to put around me. Amen? So the Bible said that God bless Isaac, number one. Amen? Number two, the Bible says that the man was great. He became great. Amen? And God didn't settle to just great. He said that he kept advancing. He kept moving forward. Amen. Okay, we use another translation. That's fine. I'm using King James. So the man began to prosper. Amen. And continued prospering. Amen. Amen. So God is not interesting, interested in us being blessed. Amen. In us being just great. He wants us to move forward. Say, move forward. move forward. Where you are is tired of you. If you're not tired with where you are, where you are is tired of you. Move forward. Say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. And the Bible says, and then he grew until he became very great. Hallelujah. So he blessed him. He continued to prosper. Amen. He went forward in the prospering. He became great until he became very great. Amen. God wants us to be very great because God wants us to have dominion. If you don't have dominion, you will not have a voice in this society. You see how God is elevating your apostle. He's giving him a name. He's giving him a title because he understands that without a title and a name in this society, you cannot have a voice. Yes. Hello. So I don't want we set off for just being blessed. There's nothing sad like Christians who are great in the eyes of God, but we're not expressing our greatness in this lifetime. Right? Now, look what the Bible says in Psalm 2.8. He says, ask of me, and I'll give you donations as your inheritance. Now, if you haven't heard the nations as your inheritance, do not settle where you are. Okay, now we need to expand our mind. 
because we are still at the little house, little blessing for my family. But until you understand that your love and your purpose is greater than who you are, I don't know, I'm talking to a dead church. You hear me? So where you are is tired of you. It's time, it's time to start moving. Say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Hallelujah. You know what is the motivation of my heart and of my life? Is destiny. He's a destiny changer. He's a destiny maker. And I'm willing to believe every word that he says about me. So I can move forward, become great and greater until I become very great. Ah! Because I want to have an influence. Because I need to influence my society. And if he say, I want to give you nations, I say, God, give me nations as my inheritance. Give me the ends of the earth as my possession. But we've got to change our mindset and our thinking in how God can do it through us. Amen. To him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Amen. He can do beyond your ability to plan. He can do beyond your ability to dream. He can do it because he is God Almighty. He is able. Nothing is too difficult for him. He said, come to me. I'll show you the greatness of who I am. I am the Lord Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Is there anything too difficult for me? He is saying that to you. Nothing is too difficult for you who believes in him. Hallelujah! Our bodies have the ability to do more. It has the ability to do more. Talk to our mother who's about to give birth. You know, when we're pushing, we keep saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. And we, are, we have a whole crew, our husband crying with us, and the whole nurse and the doctor say, you can't do it, you can't do it. And you push, you push, you push beyond your ability. The baby must come out. The baby of your destiny must come out today. You have to push and move forward. Amen? You, there is more in you than you have the capacity to understand. Today, I want to tell you there is more in you. There is more in you. Some of us, we are working at our lowest capacity. Today, we're going to stir that up in the spirit so that we can move from low to high. We can move from being blessed or to being a source of blessing. I'm preaching myself happy, amen? I'm preaching myself happy because I understand the time is coming and destiny is at hand. And each one of us have to run towards our destiny. You see, Isaac sowed in that land. You have to sow in your land. You have to sow your life as a living sacrifice to God so that he can just shoot you out in the world and make you influential and let you affect your people around you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We cannot work anymore at our lowest capacity. Now I'm going to go to 2 Corinthians 8, verse 1 to 6. Oh, I feel the fire already. Jesus. People say Montreal is dead. They just need to look at me. <laughs> Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Amen. Next. That in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. Amen. Great affliction. Amen. For I bear witness that according to their ability, say, according to their ability. It said, the Bible said that they were very poor. But according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing. How can you be so poor and give beyond your ability? It's the Bible says, according to their poverty, they gave. And beyond their poverty, they still gave. I'm not talking about money today, amen? Hallelujah. Now, the challenge is, 
How do you know your capacity? Because today I want to talk about capacity. We all have the capacity to do what God has called us to do. Each one of us, we have our own capacity, amen? amen. We have our own grace. Now, how do you know your capacity? Because we don't have the same capacity. Number one, we must stay in our own lane, amen? Within the grace and the capacity God has given us, amen? It's not because you love singing that you have to be on the worship team. Because you might not have the grace of singing. So we don't, don't break our ears, just settle the fact that you can't sing like me. You know, I've tried it, man. I, I love singing. I thought my ministry was singing because that's the only thing I loved. I went on the worship team. It wasn't the days of Bethy, I thank the Lord, amen? My worship leader kicked me out of the worship team. So I understood I have no grace or capacity for it. Do you know the strength of a person is in their ability to be honest with themselves? Mm. We're too busy saying it's the people. No, it's not the people. Look at yourself in the mirror. You can't do it. That's it. That's all you can say. It's not because your sister is in business that you have to be in business. It's not because your pastor's wife is a powerful preacher in Montreal that now as a pastor's wife you got to move. Stay in your lane, stay in your grace, stay in your capacity. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cute sometimes to say, yeah, if pastor can do it, I can do it. Yeah, 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 it's good to encourage yourself. But be honest with who you are. Can you really do what he's doing? Can you really afford to sacrifice what he's sacrificing? Hallelujah, we need to be honest with ourselves. Jesus. Capacity. Yes, yeah, sha, 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 sha. Seriously. <laughs> you know, when people sometimes say, you know what, I want to be like you, preach like you, you're so powerful. And I'm like, really? Let me tell you what I want God to do for you so you can get there. Are you willing to do what I'm doing? You know, sometimes as Christians, we waste our time comparing with, our, with one another, thinking, oh yeah, it looks glorious where she's going, now I can do it too. No, no, no. It's glorious only with the big light. After, it's just tears after tears. Amen? Ha! Ah, capacity. <laughs> so how do I know what I'm capable of doing in my life? Teach you. Number one, you have to go beyond what you are comfortable with. Comfort, comfort. We pray big prayer, but we do not want to step out of our comfort zone. And we think that God will do great things. If you are comfortable, you are, you know, on a standstill when it comes to your destiny. Comfort is one number one killer of destiny. Yes. Because God will always push you to your level of, of comfort. Amen? You cannot go beyond your comfort zone. Can I tell you the language of comfort? The language of limitation. I don't have what it takes. There's no enough time. I can't get it done. It's my husband's fault. It's my wife's fault. I can't speak in public. I'm too shy. I was born in Africa. This country is racist. White people won't let us advance. It's because I'm black. That's why doors are not being opened. Amen? Those are the language of somebody who feels comfortable in their state. Yeah? Uh-huh. 
You know, we come to God with already conditions to him or what he can or cannot do through us. Amen? We tell God what we are able and are not able to do. May my rising up give you grace to rise to your own. Amen? You know, sometimes we convince ourselves and we want to convince God of the thing we don't want to do, but really, or the thing we can do, but really it's because we don't want to do it. Are you hearing me today? So you come already, you have set up limits to your mind to what you will do or will not do. Right? I know I'm talking to everybody today. I know you know where you are, you have already decided what is the limit of how much you can come to church, of how much you are willing to sacrifice for the work of God, of how much you can give. You know, the church of Corinth, it say, the Bible says that they give, they give beyond their capacity. The Bible said that they were very poor and afflicted. So how can you give beyond your capacity? It's because there's a God who lives inside of us. Amen? Amen. It's when you challenge your capacity that you discover your capacity. If you do not challenge it, you will never discover it. How many things have we said to ourselves years ago that we couldn't do, but now we are doing? Am I? Uh Uh-huh. We do. I look at myself for years. I spoke to myself. I said, me, I cannot be a senior pastor. I put a limit to who, what I could do. Amen? Amen? For years. But God broke my capacity and the limitations of my mind. Not only am I a senior pastor, I went to start a church in a different city by myself from zero. Talk about beyond my capacity. Hallelujah. Talk about beyond my limit. Hallelujah. It's in you too. What are the things you have convinced yourself in your life that you will never do? You know, before I preached this message, I told God, I said, God, remove every limit from my mind because I can never rise beyond the limits in my mind. You can never rise beyond the thoughts you speak to yourself. You can never rise beyond, you know, the cup the lead you put on your life. You can never rise beyond. And even when God wants to do it, he needs to break break that limitation first before he can give you more, amen? And that's why I'm preaching today. So we can break that limitation so that God can increase the capacity that is inside of you. I'm talking very powerful today. What are the things that you have spoken about yourself? Or the things that have been spoken to you that you have taken as the truth and that have limited who you are as a person? What are those things? Because I know there are many. What are the voices that you have listened to all your life that have put a limit to who you are? Put a limit to your grace, to your anointing, to your calling. Today, we're going to break down all these, you know, strongholds, because they are strongholds, because they are not allowing you for advancing, amen? Listen, I did not come here to comfort your dysfunction. I came here. To tell you where you are is not where you need to be all the days of your life. Listen, church is not where we come and empower people to stay the way they are. God loves you. God bless you. Yes, he does bless you. But you know what? To him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in your life according to the power and according to the the purpose that he has placed inside of you. 
So we are not here to tell you, you know, see, you know, the thing is when you move to a city to go to another one, to start a work from the Lord, for the Lord, it becomes very difficult to just have, you know, keep people in their comfort. It's, it becomes too difficult. You know why? Because every day I live in my discomfort. Amen? But it's my discomfort that's making me advance in my destiny and in my calling. Amen? It's not my comfort zone. Every time you are in your comfort zone, you will never move and advance. Look at your apostle, how he works hard. I mean, look, look at our lives. But God is able to make us do because we have made up our mind that destiny and the call of God is the, our number one priority and the rest that God will take care of it. He will perfect everything that concerns us as long as our focus is on the purpose of God. Amen? One of my favorite verse is when Jesus was going to the cross to die, he said, the Bible said that his face was focused like flint on Jerusalem. He understood the reason why he was here on this earth, that the cross was the purpose of his life. Along the way, he healed, he taught, but his face was focused on Jerusalem. His face was focused where he was supposed to be, to die for the sin of humanity, amen? Now, what is your focus today? What is your focus today? The minute your focus is on yourself, you'll never go anywhere. You are subject to offense, subject to depression, subject to oppression. Amen? Hallelujah. But when your focus is on fulfilling God call on your life, when your focus is on serving him, to make him known and make him focus, uh, famous. When your focus is to do what he asked you to do, I tell you, success is on your way. Amen? Amen. So these are your apostle and pastor's wife, pastor that God has given you. Amen? We have made up our mind. Rain or shine, tears or without tears. We shall serve the Lord all the days of our lives. And that in itself will give us the capacity to do everything that he has called us to do. Now listen. Your perception of something of who you are will limit your strength. It's all about perception. However you perceive a thing, it'll give you the grace to overcome it or it will take away the strength for you to overcome. I don't know if many of you have been watching and listening to my live videos. I've been talking about perception. Life is all about perception. How you perceive a thing will make you decide how you're going to live your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So today, I want you to, you know, to, to challenge your dysfunction. Just challenge. I say, you know what? I need you to start challenging your negative thinking. Start challenging your I can't do it thinking. Challenge. Because God says he is able to do it through you. God says he is able. His grace is sufficient. You know, I look at the city of Montreal. And I look at the city of Calgary, amen? And it's night and day, amen? And if I have to think in my natural, I would want to be in Calgary. Amen? Because, of course, because that's where you guys are. What are you talking about? That's number one. Number two, you know, since I've lived in, I've lived in Montreal, I realize how French people, they are emotional being. Everything is emotion. Now, you come to Calgary. No, no, no. We go for more, for big, for deep. In Montreal, let's enjoy life. It's all good. Let's take our time. 
That's true. So for a person like me who wants to go for more, for nation, for inheritance, Motria is not the place I would want to be. I would want to be surrounded, not with emotional people who think about life is all good, but about Calgarian and American who go, let's go big. Let's go, you know what I'm saying? But that's my natural flesh. But my spirit, so my natural wants me to be in Calgary, but my spirit wants to be in Montreal. You know what? Capacity. I look at this city. I look at the, those people, even if you have to take them from underground somewhere. But you know what? God increased my capacity because the more I need, the more he gives me. So I want we challenge our dysfunction today. We all have dysfunction in our thinking. I'm too old. I'm too young. You know, whatever it is you speak to yourself, that's holding you back from advancing. Amen? Amen. 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 So how do I increase my capacity? Number one, you have to challenge it. Like the church of, of the book of Corinthians, he said they gave, can you put it back? according to their ability. Amen? Unless you can challenge yourself to give according to your ability, you will never go beyond your ability. So there are certain things God will ask you to do that you are able to do. Amen? And if you can obey that law that's easy for you, then he'll push you to go beyond your ability. Amen? What am I trying to say? There's people out here who have the capacity to do things, but they, won't, they are not even using it. Hello? Am I talking to somebody? You can never ask God to change the world if you cannot even come to your church and clean. You can never ask God to change your world. Hallelujah. If you're not even willing to change your life for the sake of your family. Right? Let's call a thing a thing. Amen? Capacity. Perception. Sometimes, you know what I notice? And I start telling people in my church, stop, stop praying big, powerful prayers when, you know, you can't even do the little thing. Huh? Aren't we fooling ourselves? We are too spiritual up there, but we are no earthly good. I came to tell you the truth. You cannot tell God when I have, I'm a millionaire, I'll build and pay off the church. When you won't even give a 10% of your money, give me a break. That's not how it works. Faithful in a little thing, God will put you in charge of more. How can you say, God, I'm going to be one of the biggest worship leaders? God spoke to me. That's my calling. And when your worship leader asks you to write, you know, to send out, you know, music to the overhead person or to do, and you're like, no, I can't. Where do you think that you're going to go with that attitude? Am I speaking for you, Bethia? Praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? God is a God of progress. The Bible says Isaac was blessed and he became great. There's a progress to everything that we do in life. You just don't jump to a big stage and expect the whole world to way, 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 way. Show me where you've been, where you come from, and then I can listen to you. Today I'm tough. Oh. Hey, it's the truth that will set us free. We are made for advancement. But we need to deal with our dysfunction. We need to deal with our, our, our faith condition. You know, sometimes we're so conditioned in the way that is not even biblical. 
and we live in lies that we have set up for ourselves that don't even make sense. Hallelujah. Some of you, like, my goodness, I wish I would have stayed home to watch my game. (laughs) Ah, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I come from far. You are blessed to hear me. (laughs) You know when God asks you to to build a church in three years, there are certain things you can't allow yourself to do anymore. Right? You just got to boom, 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 truth, truth, until people set free and we move on. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So how do we increase our capacity? I talked about we need to challenge our dysfunction. We need to challenge the capacity where we are at. Amen? Do you remember the story of the woman with the prophet? And the prophet asked her, go ask for jars. Amen? But the woman, I'm believing in their thinking, she was like, I need oil, I don't need jars. But if there was no jar, they couldn't have oil to contain it. Amen? If there's no increase to capacity, there's no things that God would pour into your heart. If not, it's going to go where? So we need to increase our capacity first. We need to break the limits of our thinking so that God can start coming and pour in our spirit. Amen? So that we can be a source of benediction, of blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. So number one, number three, we need to build our confidence. Your confidence is not in who you are. Your confidence is in God. One of the limitations of our lives, we look at what we can, cannot do. Say, God, but I can't talk. Amen? I remember what God spoke to me when I just got born again. He said, I'm called you to preach the gospel. I said, God, I cannot. I don't even speak. Amen? That was where my limiting capacity, I was looking at my natural way. Amen? But throughout the years, God showed me it's not in my strength but it's in his strength, amen? In my weakness, he becomes powerful, amen? His strength is being perfected in me, amen? Can I talk now? Yes. Uh-huh. So here I am limited in my view and a vision of who I was, amen? But because I allow God I step into his capacity, into his ability, into his grace, now I can speak without ceasing. Hallelujah. We got to build our confidence in God. We need to step out of our natural weakness and let God come in with his ability and capacity. And you will never see it until you step out. Every step of faith. Amen? Are you hearing me today? You know, the pathway to our greatest potential is usually through our greatest fears and our greatest limitation because God wants to get glory. So all these fears, they are limiting you to see the power and the potential of God inside of you. So God's confidence and not my confidence. Amen? And I notice some people are afraid to fail. There's no success without failure. There's no advancement without failure. So failure is part of our lives. And failure is a lesson for our advancement. Amen. So let's not be afraid to fail. At least I tried. At least I failed forward. Amen. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. Mm-hmm. Num- number four, the people around you, your connection are so important to increase your capacity. Amen? You know, studies show that you can never rise above the, most fi- the five most dominated voices in your life. 
So the five most dominating voices in your life, the five most dominant voices in your life, you can never rise beyond that. And good thing, this light is bothering me. And good thing you are listening to me, you're listening to Apostle. Because these voices, they are dominant in your life, but they, they are for your advancement. Hallelujah. So you cannot rise above the five most dominant voices in your life. So what are the voices you are listening to? What are the voices? Beside your own voices that we're going to challenge tonight, what are the other voices you are listening to? Show me who you're listening to, and I'll tell you where you're going in life. Show me the people around you, and I'll tell you who you are becoming. Hmm? Say it again. Yeah. You know... Life is all about relationships, amen? You might be one relationship away to your destiny. Amen? You might be one relationship away to the course of your destiny. Amen? I look at Pastor GB. He met my husband. When was it? 2002. And that connection affected the course of your destiny. Who would have known that that day on Memorial Drive, 2002, in the house of Method, that you meet the person who will lead you into your destiny? Yeah. Connections. We we'll pray that God will connect you to your destiny. Amen? Amen. We need to learn from people. Sometimes we're too busy, list, you know, talking, and we're not willing to listen. We need to learn how people think. We need to learn people who have advanced, who have succeeded in, our li in their lives. Get close to them. Don't be around people who are dysfunctional like you. Don't be comfortable. You know, we, we don't want to be challenged. You come to church, a pastor challenge you, you're like, I don't like this church. We need to get beyond our feelings being hurt. And hear beyond what the person is saying. Our dysfunction is not for our advancement. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five or six, wherever I am. We need to improve our competence. Amen. Amen. You know, I always tell my daughter because she interprets for me, right? She's like, Rafi, please, every end of the service, I mean, give it to me the way you see it. Because I want to improve who I am as a speaker. Amen. I mean, you can't tell me that after one year and something, I'm not better. I know I'm better and I'm becoming better. Amen? Yes. Because I have allowed people in my life to challenge so that I can get better every day. Amen? Yes. So before, when I go up, I always do this. I don't know if you guys noticed. And she's like, Mommy, why are you always doing this? And I'm not, I'm, I don't know, I'm nervous. She's like, you need to stop. I said, I stop. She challenged it, and I got better. Amen? Every Sunday, Mommy, why are you always saying this? And she made me realize the things that I do. Because you know what? 
I don't want to limit myself to my little church in Montreal and Calgary, Cross Point, international ministry. No, I'm going for more. I'm going for more. Because if God says, mm, nations, the ends of the earth, ah, I look at Mr. Trump sometimes, and I'm like, hmm, hmm, why not? Why not being president? I tell you, Mr. Trump, remove every limitation in my mind. <laughs> but you know what? One step of obedience can open up your mind and your spirit to so much more. I'll tell you why. You know when God said, go to Montreal, and I went, the very fact that I obey, it changed who I am as a person. And I remember arriving there, studying my church hard, hard, hard. And by, by the end of six months, I felt like I was like a warrior. And I remember I told God, if you want me to be prime minister, I'll be also. Because now I saw that there was no, sometimes you need to break one limit. And when you break it, you open up the world of what your possibility and your capacities are. You are one limit away to your greatest potential. Hallelujah. You know what I'm saying is so powerful and profound, and I just pray that it's entering into your spirit. Amen. Just one limit away to where God wants you to be. You got it. So we must improve our confidence, our confidence. Last one. We need to strengthen our character. You know, your talent will bring you up, but it's your character who will keep you up, like my husband always says. We need to sit down again. Look at ourselves in a mirror. You know, when we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, there are sins we just decided to give up on, and that was it. But then after, there's little sins, hidden sins, hidden areas in our lives that we have accepted to live with, that have become a part of who we are. Today, I want to challenge you to strengthen who you are, your relationship with Christ. Your, you know what I'm saying? There's the, you know, the little foxes that destroy the vines, the Bible says. It's the little things we, don't, we decide not to look you know, look past. We decide, you know what, that's fine. The little lies. Mm -hmm. The little behaviors, the little attitude. Amen? Can we strengthen our character and we look through the mirror of the word of God and say, God, change me to your image. Change me to your image. Amen? 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 You know, sometimes we're so focus on our reputation more than our character. Reputation is how people look at you. Character is how who you are inside of you. We're too busy to keep a good reputation. But when God is concerned about your character, hello? Hello? Yeah. Some Christians have become part-time Christians. Casual Christians. I'm Christian when I need it, when it works for me. That's why I'm so proud of you. You know, I was so convinced nobody would be at church because of this World Cup. I know us with Africa. Africans with soccer, we are just go for it, amen? We grew up watching World Cup, amen? But I saw commitment in you. You should clap your hands to yourselves. So we're going to deal with the hidden sins in our life. Amen? Amen? Our personal life will always affect our destiny. It is the truth. Amen? Last one, we need to increase our commitment to God. Commitment to whatever you feel God has called you for. Increase your commitment. Amen? Amen? Let's not just say, I hope to change. 
No, hoping will not bring anywhere, anyone anywhere. I choose to change. I decide to change. I made up my mind that I will change. I will not excuse where I am at. These are our languages of commitment. Amen? Amen. Did you hear me today? Yes. How bad you want something will determine what you're going to do to get it. Yes. How bad do you want it? Commitment. It's not I want to do the will of God. It's say I must do the will of God. Amen. I must do the will of God. I must serve him. I must change. These are languages of conquering spirits. Amen? When you are willing to conquer by the grace of God. I'm going to stop. Let's all rise up in the presence of God. Amen? We are advancing. Amen. We are advancing yes. from being blessed, great, very great. Amen. Amen. We're going to reach our highest potential. Yes. Say, my highest potential, I must reach it. My highest. My highest. I will do whatever it takes. I will challenge my capacity. Amen? Amen? Yeah, you're going forward, son. Yes. Hallelujah. Today we're going to break every limitation from our mind. I want you to put your hands on your head. Father God, we give you praise. I want you by yourself break every limitation. Every word, every phrase that has been spoken over you. Every lie of the enemy, we break it today in the mighty name of Jesus. We challenge every thinking that limits us for our advancement. We challenge every speaking that limits us from our advancement. Father God, we break every yoke of slavery over our mind. We thank you, mighty God, that we're going forward. We're moving forward. We're moving forward. We thank you, mighty God. We thank you, mighty God. Pray over your mind. Say, I'm not limited. Our God is unlimited God. We thank you, God. I will thank you, God. I will challenge my thinking, my capacity. I will move beyond what I can do. I choose to live out of my comfort zone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is able to do. God is able to do. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. No mind can comprehend. Father God, open our spirit today to comprehend the greatness of who you are, the greatness of who we are in you, God. Let greatness be our portion today. Let increase be our portion today. Lord, we break every hindrance, every limitation. Jesus, we give you praise. Say, I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. Nothing is too difficult for me because of the God who lives inside of me. Today, I choose to advance in my thinking. I choose to avoid despite my limitation. God, show me the greatness of who you are in my life. Open my eye, my mind, open my eyes to comprehend what you have deposited inside of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you, Jesus. Today I want you to take the hands of your neighbor. 
And I want you to start to be that voice that is dominant in their life, the voice of destiny who will speak destiny into their spirit. We've been learning about the prophetic. Just start prophesizing over their lives. Start prophesizing the word of truth. Start prophesizing advancement. Start prophesizing going forward, moving forward. We prophesy success, we prophesy success today in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We break every limitation, we break every limitation from our mind, from our thinking. Father God, today I challenge every voice by your spirit that comes to confuse your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I break every stronghold over their minds. Every high thing that has elevated itself from their thinking, from their advancement, I break it in the mighty name of Jesus. I come against the yoke of slavery over their mind in the mighty name of Jesus. I come again every spirit of oppression, of depression in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion, I destroy it in the mighty name of Jesus. I break you free from your thinking pattern that is not godly. I break you free from your thinking pattern that is from, from the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. I release you. I take you out of your prison of limitation. I pull you out now in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak grace to you. I speak elevation to you. I speak increase to you. I speak faith to you. I speak healing to you. I speak restoration to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yemando korobo seneke. Yemando seneke. Ayaba no limits, no limits, no limits, no limits to who you are, no limits to your calling, no limits to your advancement, no limits, no limits, no limits, no limits. I release every grace upon your life, the grace that will empower you to do the will of God, the grace that will empower you to succeed in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I say you're going forward. Today I say you're moving forward. Today I say it's a new day. Today I say it's a new season. Today I say you can see beyond your limitation. I say you can dream beyond your limitation. I say you will see no eye has seen. You will hear what ear has not heard. You will comprehend the will of God upon your life. I say today you will inherit your inheritance. You will possess your possession. Today I declare that God may extend the borders of your thinking. He may extend the limitations of your thinking. He may remove you from your confinement today. He may set you at large. He may set you at large. Today, I want to challenge you. Out of all these points I spoke about to increase your capacity, take one and work on it. Take one and work on it. As long as you are progressing, that's what matters. Hallelujah. Progression. Destiny is in the little steps. In the small beginnings, in the small decisions that we take, Today, I challenge you to increase your capacity. The 
Some of you, God has spoken to you already. Area where you need to remove yourself from. Some of you need to change your relationships. Some of you need to work on your character. Some of you need to improve yourselves. Some of you need to start challenging every negative voices that comes to your spirit, to your mind. Some of you need to stop receiving those voices. Some of you need to stop speaking the language of the lead, the language of comfort. I was telling people in my church, I tell them, whenever you're comfort, you feel comfortable, start asking God, make me uncomfortable because I'm too comfortable. Do you understand? Do you guys remember when the apostles, they were in Jerusalem, God has asked them to go to, to Jerusalem, to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth to preach the gospel, and they decided to stay in Jerusalem. Do you remember? And then the Bible said that persecution arose. And then they were scattered, and they started doing what God had called them to do. Now, whether that persecution was from God or not, it doesn't matter. What matter is they were doing the will of God out of that persecution. Did somebody get a message out of that? Are you willing to pray crazy prayers like that? God, whatever trial that will make me fulfill your calling, bring it on. Whatever persecution that will scatter me to do what you call me to do, bring it on. Hallelujah. Because sometimes we are too focused on the things that don't work out and we don't realize those stuff might be the reason why we need to do what God has called us for. Can we challenge ourselves, say, God, bring discomfort that will bring me to my destiny. Stir up the waters that will make me uncomfortable so I can rise up, do what you have asked me to do. The Bible said that they were in deep poverty but there was a grace upon this church that out of their poverty and the trials they were going to they said they gave according to their capacity their means but they went beyond hallelujah could it be that when you are in luck you see the hand of God you see the grace of God being manifested in your lives could it be that we're looking praying prayer so we are comfortable when God wants us to be uncomfortable so that we can go beyond the limits of our minds could it be that trials and tribulation are the vehicle to our destiny could it be that the pain we go through will bring out the true colors of who we are. The challenges of life will awaken in us the giant within us. Could it be that the prayers that we pray, they are a little bit off? Hallelujah. That's a thought. Just think about it. Amen. can never be successful in God if we're not challenged. I have learned to embrace my challenge. I have learned to embrace the pains. I have learned to embrace because I have seen this out of this I become better and stronger in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Can we clap our hands to the Lord today? God is good. God is good. You will possess your possession. You will move forward. You will accomplish the purpose of God on your life. 
Your language will be different. Hallelujah. You'll say, I must go to Jerusalem like Jesus. I must have my mountain like Caleb. Hallelujah. I must cross the Red Sea. I must. Whatever it's going to take. Because God is for you and he is with you. He is for you and he is with you. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for Heidi and Jeff. Pray for their parents who are going through a tough time. Hallelujah. Come on, Heidi and Jeff. I'm going to ask the pastors and the elders. We're going to come and surround them. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if the church knows what you're going through. Thank you, Pastor Nadia. You're welcome. Um, I'm kind of here, just a little, it's a little unusual for me right now. Just um, many of you know about the situation that we're facing with uh, Heidi's mom and Heidi's dad. Um, they have cancer. Oddly enough, they both have the, the same cancer in the same stage when it was first diagnosed. And the doctors were kind of amazed by that. But just the, the suffering that's followed that. And um, it seems now her mom is kind of beyond what medical help uh, can actually do. Um, and, and many of you have already prayed for us. And I, I, I just want to thank you for that. But the reason why I'm coming this morning is I was praying for Heidi's mom a couple days ago. And it was actually uh, just before we were about to watch the movie of that boy who... Uh, had a, a very close call with death and then went went to heaven and talked about heaven and so uh, and I, was, I was just praying just before that about her because I just felt something stirring in my spirit and my daughter Madison came to me and said daddy it takes a hundred people to reach a tree to heaven and I was, I was at first confused by it I said what do you mean and she just kind of went on playing and but in my heart it was God was speaking to me Jeff your miracle is at hand the miracle that you've been asking for the miracle that you've been praying for and 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 not out of performance it could have been one person it could have been ten people it could have been a thousand people so not out of performance that's not what we're here for today but just out of obedience pure obedience just to come and say a hundred people to pray a hundred people to pray for a tree to reach heaven and to release healing now in a miraculous way because that's all that's gonna that's all that can make a difference now and so that's all we we just ask just humbly come before you now and it's for a hundred of us and then, and i believe there's more than a hundred here so i think That'll work. <laughs> so, I, so I, I'm just believing for that, that, believing for that reaching out to heaven and that right now in this moment, that heaven's power will come down and perform a miracle and cause a release into our church and into Heidi's uh, parents. Hallelujah. Can we just stretch out our, our hands? Come on, let's surround them. Hallelujah. 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 Remando korobo shedeke, ye mando korobo sedeke, haya basondo korobo sedeke, remando korobo shedeke, remando korobo shedeke, haya basondo korobo sandaka, yende kere basondo korobo sedeke, yende kere basondo korobo sedeke, God of mercy, God of compassion. 